Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Tiny11. If you haven't heard about Tiny11, this is apparently a stripped down or watered down version of Windows 11 where they rip out all the bloatware, get rid of the TPM and CPU requirements and encryption requirements, secure boot, all that good stuff, or if you think it's good stuff. Um, and they also remove a lot of the hardware requirements because I know there's a lot of us out there. I had an older PC as well before I built my new rig. I couldn't upgrade to Windows 11 uh, due to my CPU. So this is a very good opportunity for you guys to check out Windows 11 if you have an older piece of hardware. So let's jump right in, guys. Today I'm going to demonstrate this install on a virtual machine because it's just easier to demo through the video. Um, I will include this uh, download link there's also archive.org that has a link, but I, it wasn't working today. I don't know if it's just me or maybe their site's having issues. Um, so I'll include the techworm.net link for you guys. The newest version is 22H3. For some reason, that's down as well today. So I've downloaded the 22H2 um, ISO. This is the one with no system requirements. So I've already got that downloaded, but you guys feel free to click that and download it. Let's jump back over to VMware Player. And we'll create a new virtual machine. And this thing supposedly can run on 2 gigabytes of RAM and only 8 gigabytes of storage. So let's see if that's true. All right, I'm going to say I'm going to install it later. It's going to be Windows. I'm going to say 10 here because if I say 11, it's going to ask for a password. I'm just not trying to do that. Let's see if it'll work. Tiny 11. All right, so let's give it eight gigs of space. Let's customize the hardware. And let's give this thing, oh, I'm already on memory. We do have to give it a little more, two gigs of memory. Close, finish. All right, there's our Tiny 11. Now let's attach our ISO. Might be in my downloads, wherever you guys have yours. And obviously if you're putting this on a piece of hardware, you'll need to get that ISO onto like a bootable USB. If you guys are not familiar with creating bootable USBs, I'll leave a card up here for you. Uh, I have a playlist on all things bootable USBs. Check it out, you'll become a ninja in no time in all things bootable USBs. But for this demonstration, all you need to do is be able to boot into the ISO, whether that's on a VM or a laptop or a PC or whatever. All right, so we've got our ISO attached. We said connect that power on. We've configured our hardware, and now we are ready to boot this guy up. Let's power him on. Okay. This is my first time installing this, but from what I've read, it's it's basically the same as any Windows install. So we'll just run through this process, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so this looks familiar so far. You gotta accept the EULA. There's our drive. Only eight gigs here, guys. So we're gonna see. Okay, we have to install this version of Windows. The system drives needs to needs to be 52 gigs or larger. Let's see what happens. We couldn't create a partition or locate an existing one for more information. Okay, that's typical. So I'm not too sure about that 8 gigs they're talking about here. Alright guys, I think we're going to have to extend this and come back because this is not working. All right, let's power this guy down. And let's jump back in there. Tiny 11, let's go ahead and go to settings and expand that drive. Give it 60. And let's try again. Round two, fight. All 
Okay, let's try this again, guys. We have a hard drive that should be big enough to meet the requirements there. And we ended up with two partitions, so let's go ahead and delete this. And now we have a 60 gig partition. Should be good to go to next. So yeah, guys, I don't know. Maybe I maybe what I read was for a different version of Tiny 11. Uh, however, this version did require 52 gig hard drive to install. I don't think that's a big deal. Most people have at least a you know at least 100 gig hard drive nowadays. Um, that would be a really old computer. I mean, nothing really comes with less than 300 nowadays. But anyways. What I read was 2 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs of hard hard disk space. So maybe that what they were saying was it can run, it can consume as little as 8 gigs of space. But because this is still a Windows 11 installer, maybe that requirement is still there and they weren't able to get rid of that. I don't know. I'm, I'm doing this for the first time with you guys here. So anyways... Just be aware of that. The version that I downloaded, uh, 22H2 Tiny 11, said 52 gig minimum for the hard drive. So we'll let this run, guys. I'll fast forward through it, and we'll be back when this is done. All right, guys, we've got Tiny 11 up and running. Looks pretty basic. Looks just like Windows 11. Pretty stripped down, though. Not a lot going on here. We have some common basic things like this store, the Microsoft Store, Photos, Settings, Calculator, Notepad, Paint, File Explorer, and not a lot else. I don't even see a browser here. Is there Edge? Doesn't look like it. Probably not Chrome for sure. Um, yeah, we can't even open a link. It says get an app to open this Microsoft Edge link. Let's go to the store. Install. And we get an error. We can't we can't install this app right now. Okay. So let's try to check for updates and see if that helps. So let's go back to settings. Windows updates. And let's check for updates. Okay, we've got quite a bit going on here, guys. I think we need to get these installed. And we'll be back after this is done, and we'll see if things look a little better. All right, guys, that first round of updates has completed. Let's see if there's anything else we need to get updated. I already see a little bit more going on here. We've got Solitaire. We've got 0365, Outlook, Xbox, okay, Spotify. So it does look like you can install stuff here. We just needed to get some updates. So let's see if there's anything else pending. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think there was another rev. Yeah, so let's try that. Okay, I'm going to try to get this up to the latest version available. And we'll be right back. Alright guys, so that last rev has completed. And I believe we are completely up to date now. So let's just confirm that. Yes, we are up to date. One thing I did notice though, Edge is still not working. And that's the only browser that says it's installed, but let's just take another look here. So when I look for Edge browser, try now. Brings you to the store again. click on the app it says it's installed but there's no way to open it here I don't know if I'm missing something or what or maybe this is just an issue with uh, tiny 11 I'm not sure so what I did was I installed this little platinum browser and I'm able to open that so from here maybe we can get to Google and install Chrome Looks like that should work, but let's make sure we can download that and install it. Beep. 
Yeah, so I'm not sure about the edge issue, guys. Um, I don't know if it's a version of Tiny11 or if that's just typical behavior, but just beware. So, so far what I've noticed is it's very fast, I will say that, as far as rebooting and booting up. This is extremely fast, way faster than a bloated or full version of Windows 11. However, um, beware if you do install it, you need to get it up to date, so run those updates right after you install the ISO, run through all the updates, make sure it's fully updated. Um, and then you may have to work around the browser issue like I did, like Edge, you would think it would work on a version of Windows, but again, maybe that's a Tiny11 not officially licensed by Microsoft, whatever issue. Um, not the end of the world in my opinion, because I'm not... Uh, Edge is cool, but it's not my default. I use Chrome more than anything, to be honest. So looks like we're able to get to Chrome, so that's working. Uh, but yeah, to work around that, guys, I did have to go to the store and download a different browser that they offered, which was like that Platinum browser. We can You can rip that out of there after the fact if you don't want to use it. Um, so yeah, that's working now. Let's see what else is in here. It looks like Defender is on there now after we updated. That's good. You get a little protection. Oops, sorry about that. Let's bring that back up here. So yeah, I mean, overall, not bad. It looks like a functional version of Windows 11. Not bad at all for free, and if you can't run Windows 11 on your older PC. So I'm, I'm not mad at it. Uh, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in here. It's just a little bit of work setting it up, which I kind of anticipated that. Obviously, it's not an official version of Windows. Well, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. So it's not a licensed version of Windows. Speaking of that, when we go to activation, uh, we do get an error. At least earlier, I was getting an error here as far as activating, which, again, I kind of anticipated that as well. Uh, if it'll load, I'll show you. Yeah. Windows reported that no product key was found. So, I mean, yeah, it's not, technically, it's not a licensed version of Windows. Um, what I've read online, and the, this is quote unquote free, but there's obviously no support from Microsoft. So, uh, if something happens, you know, basically, in other words, use this at your own risk. I think it's pretty cool. I'll probably kick the tires on a little more, and I definitely just wanted to walk through it with you guys as far as my first time installing it. So yeah, I hope you guys check it out, and if you have an older PC or laptop that you're, you know, it's just accumulating dust at this point, maybe try it out. Let me know what you think, guys. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover. Yeah, local accounts, make sure you get it updated, get the browser, and then you can install stuff. It does look like the, excuse me, it does look like the Microsoft Store is functional after you get everything updated, so that's cool. You can install additional apps as you need to. But yeah, this is very fast. One thing I, we should look at, guys, is how much room does this take up? Because again, I read that 8 gigs and it didn't seem to be true. Yeah, that part's not true, guys. Um, not sure. Maybe that was me, but what I read was it would run on as little as 8 gigabytes of memory. But obviously, it's using... It says 36 free out of 59 out of 60. So it's already using over... 13, 14 gigs. So, again, I don't think that's a, it shouldn't be a deal breaker for pretty much anyone, but just beware. I, I read somewhere on a couple different articles uh, two gigs of RAM. That part is true because it only has two gigs of RAM and eight gigs of, of space. Excuse me. That part for me, at least for me, was not true. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, let me know if you guys have checked it out. Obviously, I didn't go super deep in here, but it does look like a functional version of Windows 11. I think my, I have a couple gripes with it um, thus far. One, the biggest one in my opinion, it's not live. Um, if I'm going to test new things out, I like them to be a live ISO. That would be really cool if we could have checked this out without installing. But it's a VM. I can just blow this away, no problem. Uh, and the other one is... I had to jump through a couple hoops there in the beginning. I had to get it fully up to date. I had to get a browser downloaded and things like that to make it feel like it's a functional OS. But either way, I mean, beggars can't be choosers. And if you're able to get a free version, I say version of Windows 11, it, it really is, but obviously it's stripped down. There's no support. Uh, you can't really complain about that. So 
pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you've tested it out and uh, what you're using it on. I'd be curious to know. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely, if you got any type of value out of this, I'd appreciate it if you would like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. And if you feel like supporting the channel, guys, a big way to do that is checking out my shop, bootableusbs.com. I've got some channel swag on there. I've got, you know, socks and coffee mugs and things like that. But I also have some really cool USB drives that I custom make uh, each one of those individually. They're really cool. If you haven't seen my series on USBs, check it out. Uh, either way, I'll get off that soapbox. Till the next one, guys, have a great day and take care.